Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash t-r-y-n-o-m dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by singer, songwriter, and producer, Steve Gasper. Steve has an amazing bio as he is Grammy nominated and he has performed with artists such as James Brown and B.B. King. He has put together a band called the Hollywood All-Stars and he is very excited to tell you about the lineup and, and the familiar names that you might recognize. So Steve, thank you so much for joining me today. You know, Curtis, after that introduction, I don't know if I could even thank you enough. Really, man, I appreciate it. Thank you for welcoming and welcoming me into your listening family tonight. I really appreciate it. Oh, we appreciate you. So why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, I Curtis started at uh, piano lessons at four and a half years old. My dad was a classical musician. And um, really, at four and a half, I had no choice. He just wanted me to play the piano. And it I didn't realize at the time the blessing and what he was really giving me. Uh, it truly was a gift that I carry with me to this day. All right, man. Well, that's great. Um, like I said, you have an impressive bio. You went from playing the, the piano to working with people like James Brown and B.B. King. So why don't you kind of give the listeners, uh, you, you know, tell them who, who all you've had the privilege to work with that they might know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So this career of mine, it started in classical piano and that went from like four up to 14. And then at age 14, you know, all the big popular music revolution that was going on in the United States at the time. Um, too many artists to mention, but that kind of music just started resonating with me. And, you know, I started with my little garage bands and my basement bands and started writing and eventually was able to connect through some friends with I'm trying to think what the first, you know, name gig would have been. Well, I mean, before any of those, as a teenager, my now wife and I were signed to Epic Records. Uh, we had a single out called Promise Me. And that was really the beginning of it all, Curtis. OK, you you have a band called the Hollywood All-Stars that that you have put together. So just kind of tell us, you know, about that band and, and the uh, All-Star lineup that you have and, and why you even decided to develop that band in the first place. Well, you know, several years ago, I decided to put this act together. And, you know, the motivation behind it, the philosophy behind it was I was going to do things my way uh, as big as I wanted uh, there were going to be no compromises and no restrictions. And that applied to not only the personnel, the people that are involved in the project, but the direction the music took, the scope of the project, the fact that within three months after finishing the final mix, the album was picked up by a label, which is kind of kooky. You know, it's unheard of these days. But to answer your question, uh, 
<laughs> this traveling circuits, I call it, that I wrangled together uh, includes the horn section from the Rolling Stones Steel Wheels Tour. They're called the Uptown Horns. Uh, they've worked with the Stones, with everybody in contemporary music. Uh, our male lead singer, Tommy Bowes, was the lead singer with Tower of Power, uh, the infamous horn band, I'm sure everyone knows, when they were just signed to Epic Records, Epic Columbia, and they put out their record, Monster on a Leash. Uh, Tommy was featured on that, and uh, critics praised him, and he's just an extraordinary vocalist. My co-producer on the project is, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed to have this guitar player, Curtis. I mean, he's really my own private little Steve Lukather. He's uh, really exceptional, a wonderful producer, uh, wonderful engineer, killer guitarist, and, you know, very dear friend. Andy Abel is on guitar. Um, sort of the spiritual leader of the band, Eddie Torres, our percussionist. He's the one that he keeps everyone's hopes alive. Uh, you know, this is it can be a very cruel business and very frustrating at times. But Eddie's always there to keep uh, keep me smiling and moving forward, which is, you know, what I'm doing uh, by, you know, doing interviews like this with you with you this evening. Well, as we talked about earlier, you've had the opportunity to work with some of the greats in music. So if you would t talk about uh, maybe the best person or, or the favorite person that you have uh work with in your past or people and why? Uh, you know what, Curtis, that's a great one. And I'd feel remiss if I didn't mention, you know, some of them uh, because there's so many I wouldn't want to, you know, when you say my favorite and I do have an answer for you. Um, but I've been privileged to work with Edgar Winter, Gene Cornish, the guitar player from the Rascals, um, my record producer who had worked with Stevie Wonder and a whole host of other people, B.B. King, as you had mentioned, um, you know, the one that comes to mind is really standing out uh, would be James Brown, the Godfather. He was such an extraordinary example, not only of his showmanship, but the way he ran his band. And it was as tight as a drum and people were hanging on his every move and his every word. And it, it wasn't so much about following a chart. You know, I don't recall any of those guys having an iPad or a music stand in front of them. Uh, this band was just on top of James Brown watching him. And it was it was really something to witness, let alone have the opportunity to share the stage with. So that would probably be the one that, you know, stands out the most. James Brown, for sure. OK, well, who are some of your musical influences? You know, you, you've been doing music for a while. So who are some of the influences you, you know that you look up to and that maybe when you can't come up with something you well, well let me turn this th this band on or, or this person on so i can kind of get my juices flowing or, or somebody you're always looking forward to their no new absolutely album. absolutely i i hear what you're saying you know for me it's a little weird i mean i have like my songwriting influences on one in one column and then i would have my producer influences in another column and then my keyboard influences, that would probably be divided into two columns between classical, which is where I started and where I really ended up now, which I, you know, it's kind of a pop rock R&B direction that the Hollywood All-Stars is in. Um, you know, songwriters, I've always gone back to the standards, you know, the Marvin Gaye's, uh, you know, songs like What's Going On. And it's just like there's a whole selection, a whole group of those record producers. I always fell in love with David Foster's productions. Barry Eastman, uh, the work he did with Anita Baker was just outstanding. I had the opportunity to be on a record with Barry uh, several years ago. It was one of the American Idol finalists, Latoya London. Uh, that record is really good. If anybody wanted to check it out, it's Latoya London's Love and Life. It's on Peak Records. And uh, that was a very good album. Uh, anyway, and then, you know, when it gets to my piano and organ influences, piano, I mean, I love Bruce Hornsby's playing. I certainly admire Elton, Billy Joel, you know, those guys. Stevie Winwood is an interesting piano player, but I would lean on him more for organ. Other organists, Felix Cavalieri from the Rascals did some iconic Hammond B3 stuff. Uh, Greg Rowley from Santana is a favorite Hammond organ player and 
maybe at the top of that list would be Chester Thompson, the keyboard player, original organist with Tower of Power. Uh, and he later moved on and was touring with Santana. I'm not sure what Chester's doing now, but extraordinary Hammond B3 player. Okay, well, I know when when we were in the green, green room, you you were excited, you, you know, to lay out and uh, talk about, you know, everything that you're up to, you know, current and upcoming projects. So, you know, I'd like to give you the floor to discuss, you know, the, the, these upcoming projects so the listeners will be aware of them and check them out. Thank you, Curtis. That's really very kind of you. I appreciate the uh, forum to tell people. I mean, I mean, the thing that's at the front of my list right now, uh, at the front of my heart, is the Hollywood All-Stars. Um, the Hollywood All-Stars is that collection of musicians. I had mentioned some of the artists that the band has toured and recorded with. Uh, and you know, this again, this is no joke. I mean, I'm going, I'm telling people now, and I don't know if people hear this and go, yeah, yeah, you know, my cousin's got a record out too. Um, you know, this is the horn section from the Rolling Stones. Uh, as I, myself and others in the band that work with James Brown, uh, Tommy Bowes from the Tower of Power, guitarist Andy Abel from Blood, Sweat and Tears. Um, our percussionist played on Vicky Sue Robinson's Turn the Beat Around. Uh, two drummers. I mean, we have a couple of drummers we use. Tony Cintron, tour is phenomenal, toured with Joe Bonamazza. And Lee Finkelstein, our drummer who's on most of the tracks on the record, uh, is actually going out to uh, Sicily with the original Blues Brothers band in a couple of weeks. So, you know, everybody there is certainly well known. And the two people that played bass on the project, I would have to mention Scott Spray, who you know, worked with Edgar Winter, Johnny Winter. He was actually Johnny Winter's touring bassist for 15 or more years. Uh, it's on over 850 records. Scott and I go back from the time we were kids. Um, lifelong friend. And then we were doubly blessed and honored to have appear on our track, Living in America, the great bassist, Will Lee. Um, anyone who that knows music at all has heard of Will. He's played with everybody probably best known or very well known for being the bass player on David Le uh, the David Letterman show for, I don't know, what, 20 years. They were called the world's most dangerous band with Paul Schaefer. Will was the bass player. Um, and the, and so the songwriters that are involved in the project, I mean, obviously me, I'm the chief songwriter, chief producer. Uh, the whole project, it was my, my crazy dream. Uh, sometimes I wonder what I was thinking, but I'm grateful every day that I did finally follow through and put the band together. Uh, we also have a song done by the Uptown Horns. Uh, we have another song contributed by Mr. Um, Charlie Midnight, who co-wrote Live the James Brown hit, Living in America. That's the only cover song that we have on the record. The others are all originals. Uh, the direction is, uh, if you could imagine, like a, if Blood, Sweat and Tears crossed with Toto and came out today, the Hollywood All-Stars, I think, is the uh, the morphed version of those two bands in a contemporary fashion. The title song, Field of Grace, Curtis, is, uh, you know, if I do say so myself, it's like a mini movie. It takes you through so many different places, the beginning of a relationship, up through the breakup where, you know, this killer guitar solo comes in and you can just see the reset relationship going up in flames. Uh, we have a funky R&B horn song, sort of like a slick contemporary version of the song Shotgun. It's called What Good Is Your Body If You Ain't Got No Soul? And that song is kind of our, our take on all the plastic surgery people are having, which is cool, not against it. Uh, if you want to do what you want to do, you're not hurting anyone, that's fine. But I think people need to realize what is truly important is what's on the inside. And that's kind of what that song is about. And then the other one I do want to mention before I shut up, <laughs> um, probably my favorite song as a songwriter on the record is a beautiful, beautiful gospel ballad called The River. Um, Curtis, I have to tell you, people, if they haven't listened to this record, I, w I wish everyone, everyone belongs to some streaming service, you know, whether it's Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, you get it for free. I don't even make any money, but that's fine. Go listen to the songs. I really want people to try and connect with them. The River is sort of like a prayer. Um, it's a ballad. Uh, Tommy Bo sings the pants off of it. It's, um... It's a prayer and it's a, a song of hope, which I think all of us could use, you know, every now and again, but especially now, if you know what I'm saying. So I, the river is, a, you know, another one I want people to check out. But I mean, the record is called The Hollywood All-Stars Field of Grace. 
Uh, it's available on Deco Entertainment. Uh, that's D-E-K-O. Our website, which you can find everything on, is www.thehollywoodallstars.net, N-E-T. Um, there's a merch button there if you just want to go on and check out the band and pictures and, you know, some great videos, some great uh, fan comments. I've got a list of industry comments. The record has been getting very positively received. But obviously, without you, Curtis, and your audience, the band, you know, will just fade into the uh, abyss. There's just so much talent out there now and so many bands that... We are all, you know, really working hard for everyone's, you know, musical dollar, if you want to look at it that way. But again, to sum up, I do want to thank you for the open floor. It's much appreciated. Oh, I want to thank you as well. And you answered my question about throwing out the website and contact info. So if, if you have any final thoughts or anything else that you want to say, maybe if there's something I forgot or just any final thoughts, you can do so right well, now. Sure, Curtis. Thank you. At the risk of sounding like a broken record again, I want to say this because I mean it. It's from the heart. Without people like you and your audience and all the people out in Streamingville, um, the Hollywood All-Stars can't exist. It's a very big band to try to take uh, out on tour, which is why our live performances are so far and few between. Uh, if anyone out there is working with an agent or a manager that has any influence in the booking of a pop R&B horn, funky horn rock band with a record deal, we would be loving to hear from them. And, you know, the songs are beginning to pick up all over the world. I just got an email yesterday that we've just been added to a couple of stations, one in the UK and one in Japan. So, you know, I'm confident that the music will do the talking for us, Curtis. And again, I want to thank you from myself and the band. We really appreciate you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Please check out the Hollywood All-Stars and Steve Gaspar. Support everything that they're up to. Follow, rate, review. Share this episode to everybody. Share it to everybody. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, cjackson102 at cox.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening. And Steve, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.